over the last 10 years, uh, uh, police departments have been using constant CompStat models, you know, telling captains, you know, your burglaries are up in your neighborhood, what are you going to do about it? But that's reacting to last week's problems. Uh, the, the drug markets might have moved on, that burglar has already moved on to the next neighborhood, and so any reaction to those problems are probably already too late. So predictive policing sort of says, well, perhaps there's something in our data, in our 911 calls, in the weather, in the patterns that we're starting emerging. Can we anticipate crimes? So rather than being reactive to what the problems were last week, get ahead of that burglar, get ahead of that drug market before it becomes a real problem. And so that's the essence of predictive policing, using data, models, and connecting it with a good prevention model to prevent crimes uh, before they happen. There's one department that we've been working with has a couple specialty teams, a street drug interdiction unit, a community liaison unit, a community response unit, and these, these are limited resources. There's only five street inter interdiction officers available. So it's this very valuable, very limited resource, and they're going to put it somewhere. And the police department just simply wants to know what's the best place to put it, where are we going to have the greatest impact. And so predictive policing sort of gives them you know, a step up. You know, here's the place where your drug market's emerging. Get your, your street interdiction unit there. Here's a place where we anticipate a lot of gang activity or, or, or gun uh, or shootings. Get your community response unit, unit there. Here's where we see a lot of disorder developing. Get the community liaison officers uh, in there before the disorder becomes uh, so bad and sort of uh, contaminates the whole neighborhood. So sort of using you know, given that we have limited resources but valuable resources, let's make the most of these, these resources uh, by using predictive policing to get them in the right places at the right times. Remember there's, there's two parts. There's a prediction model and a prevention model. So this is going to be a combined effort between analysts and researchers developing the best prediction models. We also need those practitioners, those cops who know the streets and know various prevention uh, strategies. And it's going to be a team effort getting those analysts, getting good predictions, and the cops coming up with good prevention models to actually make predictive policing have a, an impact on crime.